I guess we can move on. I promised that I'm going to give you a self-supervised framework. This is unlike supervised framework where you have labels. Here you only have images that you need to work with. So there is no human labeler involved, unlike classification, unlike segmentation. And that's about colorization. That's a task. You have an old photo, you want to make it look new for the new age. How does it work? Rather than looking at the red, green, blue channels, you are gonna look at lightness and AB color channels. The lightness is gonna give you your black and white image and the color are gonna give you the colors in the end. Still, you have three channels, L, A, B, rather than red, green, blue. You take your lightness channel, push it through a bunch of convolutions. There is nothing special up until this last layer. Then something interesting happens here, which I need to explain. Maybe it's better to explain it using some formulas. And then you're gonna do your prediction and do your training. You have some inputs. It has only one channel and you want to get the rest of the channels out the colors. So you want to associate two colors per each pixel. So it's a per pixel prediction task. What you can do is you can take X, push it through a neural network, and F is a mapping that you need to learn. And that's gonna give you the prediction of your model. And then you can look at uh, the distances. For instance, mean squared error distance. That could be your loss function at the end. Prediction minus the data squared Minimize that with respect to the parameters of your neural network. Why is, this a, why is this a good idea? Because apparently distances in the LAB color space somehow model perceptual distances. We can absolutely do that. This is not the architecture that you see up there. There's gonna be some differences here. You can do that. And then you can look at your images, your colorful images, and then you're gonna notice some weird colors for instance, an apple being colored as blue. It turns out that this distance or L2 loss function is not gonna be robust to some ambiguities and multimodal nature of the colorization task. This is a mouthful in simple terms. An apple can only take a handful of colors like red, green, yellow. An apple should not be blue or orange. Maybe there are some weird apples out there but they're outliers. And this is a multimodal distribution. Maybe it's not a good idea to model that with a Gaussian distribution because whenever you write down a mean squared error loss, your underlying assumption is Gaussian distribution. We know that something like softmax, when we were using it for classification, is able to approximate uh, multimodal distributions. But softmax is for classification, it's for finite number of values. For colorization, you have infinitely many values for your colors. What can you do? You can meet in between. You can quantize these values that you're predicting. How do you quantize it? The AB space is from negative 110 up until 110. These are the values that A and B are going to take. You can quantize it by a grid that has a grid size of 10. A lot of uh, those values are going to be not in gamut means that those colors are not going to happen in your reality. The likelihood of them happening is very low. And then you're going to be able to quantize this interval square to 313 values. Now we can write the softmax outputting 330 values. Okay, so far so good. So X goes in, and then what you're, this is exactly this blue box here. It's outputting probability distribution over colors. Now you quantize them and you're fine. We can use softmax here. Now you need to have labels to train this. Previously for classification, you would write down your cross entropy loss between your labels, which were one hot encoded and your predictions of your model. What can you do now? You need to take your color, uh, colorful image in the end and then uh, do some inversion to give you the ground truth in the Z space. You need to encode them. How do you encode them? One option is to pick any of your pixels and then do one hot encoding on that. How do you do it? You look at that scalar, compare it to 313 values, and you pick the closest. You put a one there, you put zeros everywhere else. That's one option. Another option is you pick five 
nearest neighbors among these 313 values. You can put ones there and zeros everywhere else, or you can uh, take into account the distance between this scalar and to the top five nearest neighbors and smoothly change the values. Now those five values are not gonna be ones anymore. They are gonna be some other values and the rest of them are gonna be zero. So you're smoothing your labels. Now that you have your labels, you can write down your cross entropy loss. This is your label. That's the corresponding prediction of your model. Uh, do a summation over the output values, 313. For image classification on MNIST, this was 1000. This is now 313. But there is a catch. For ImageNet, you had 100 images, sorry, 1000 images per each class. That was a balanced data set. This one is not balanced. Why is that? Because after quantization in your images, there are gonna be a lot of pixels corresponding to the sky. So some of the colors are gonna dominate. So you need to rebalance your loss function. You need to reweight. Don't give too much weight or the same weight to the background because you have a lot of data on it. Then you're gonna overfit to the color of the sky. This is a weighting term. This is based on class rarity. I'm gonna go through it soon you have some class probabilities that are coming out of your neural network, these Z hats. How do you actually go back to the images? Image color, you're gonna do some averaging. You're gonna take your Zs, the predictions of your model, push them through a soft max, but then with a temperature. And there is a lot of trial and error going on here to pick the correct temperature to give you the best quality or the best looking image. So that's how you're gonna convert the predictions of your model in terms of Zs, in terms of scores, to the actual real values that you want to see. How do you do the rebalancing? How do you come up with these weights? You're gonna look at the empirical distribution. This is just a histogram of all of these colors that can happen in all of your images. You're gonna smooth them out using a Gaussian kernel. You're gonna smooth out these values. The idea is you're gonna choose some weights in a reverse relationship with these empirical distributions, with the number of times that the color happened in your image. So you're gonna use the histogram of your data to come up with these weights. And to see if this makes sense, if you set lambda to be zero, actually lambda to be one, this term is gonna end up being zero. And then you're gonna have one over Q, which is just the uniform distribution. You are putting uniform weight on everything, which is not a good idea. So lambda is a hyperparameter that you need to choose. And then there is gonna be a normalization constant here because you need them to add up to one. You are gonna determine that normalization constant in a way that the expected value of W is one. And this is gonna give you the normalization constant that you're looking for. We are not done yet. You are gonna look at the prediction of your model, which is Z, H, W per each pixel. You have Q channels, Q colors that could come out. You pick the maximum color. And then this weight that you see here is actually when you're picking out the closest bin out of this W because W is a vector. And that's how you're gonna do the weighting. The cool thing is you can use colorization. You don't need to have any labeled data, you're just looking at your images, dividing them per two channels or per three channels. Channel lightness is the input, color channels are the output, no label data, no uh, labels in the form of, I don't know, this is a cat, that's a dog. You don't need to have classification labels. And then your neural network is gonna be able to self-supervise and it's acting as a cross-channel encoder. This is first channel, this is the other channel, and then you're doing, this is not an auto encoder, this is a cross channel encoder architecture. And then you're gonna end up with some pre-trained weights and biases that then you can transfer to other tasks, mm -hmm. such as Pascal VOC classification, detection we are gonna go through next, and then segmentation, we saw some applications. So you can do transfer learning this way, pre-training, fine tuning in a self-supervised fashion. I think I'm gonna stop here. For those of you who have questions, I'll be around.